This is the OpenSource.club, a free St. Louis-focused knowledge share podcast. Through industry experts, entrepreneurs, personal stories, and more, we provide the information you need to achieve and thrive. Always visit our website, theopensource.club, for more details. Contact us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. With new incentives for eco-friendly construction, environmentally friendly windows have become popular. This popularity has created a huge job boom for glaziers. A skilled glazier can build a long-term career and command high wages. In this Sustainable Life episode by The Open Source, learn about the Glazier's Local 513 Earn While You Learn Department of Labor Certified Apprentice Program. Now, here's your host, Bonita Cornut. Have you ever looked out your window and wondered, who made it? Today, we are talking about glaziers. When I come back, I'll tell you all about this occupation. I'm your host, Bonita Cornut. You are listening to The Open Source. Become a subscriber. Go to www.theopensource.club. Add your email to the podcast subscription window. Get new shows in your inbox. A glazier is a skilled tradesperson who fabricates residential and commercial windows, something I didn't know. They cut and install glass, storefronts, specialized architectural designs, and many other places. The U.S. Department of Labor says that employment growth for glazers will be double-digit for at least the next decade. Now, that's impressive. In fact, glazer jobs will actually grow faster than the average for all other jobs. Now, it makes sense when you think about it. How many vehicles or buildings do you see without windows? Not many, I'm sure. Well, my guest today is Union Local 513 Apprentice Coordinator, Bob Skelton. For more than 30 years, Skelton has worked with all aspects of glass. Skelton is an expert glazer. He enjoys being the apprentice coordinator because he's excited, really excited about passing on this skill to a new generation. Well, we can't wait to talk, Glazers. On the other side of this message, you will hear from Bob. You are listening to The Open Source. Become a subscriber. Go to www.theopensource.club. Add your email to the podcast subscription window. Get new shows in your inbox. Welcome, Bob. I hope you're uh, ready to talk about glass and glazers and what you do and you've been doing for a number of years, it looks like. Is that right? That's right. Yes, I am. Uh, We have um, a couple of questions we wanted to get through. The glazers, we know, have an apprentice program, and I understand that you have 43 students currently enrolled. What's the demographic makeup of that group? I mean, talking about gender and the average age, when do they come? Yeah, well, uh, right now we have all men in our program. Uh, We have had some women to come through and have finished our program that are working in the field today. Mm -hmm. Uh, We just don't have that many women actually apply for our apprenticeship. But we do have several on file now for our next testing, so hopefully we will get some more in. And um, our average age is about 27 for our apprentices. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, so they're not necessarily fresh out of high school, or do they, do they perhaps have some life experiences and then decide to enter the program? Yes, most of them have had life experiences. Um, a lot of them have already started their families. Oh. Um, we do have a few that come straight out of high school, just not that many. I see. Is there a particular recruitment process that you used basically to attract the 43 that you have now and over the years past? Yes, um, we used... You know, local job fairs, go to high school career fairs. Uh, we have all of our inter- um, the apprentice information on our website. A lot of our apprentices come from family members of Glazers. So, is that basically a, a, a lifeline or a connection, yes, a direct connection? Absolutely, for, for family. absolutely, it is. But in re in reaching out to those um, individuals, this is a skilled industry job. It's hard work. Tell me, do you need math and reading proficiency and why why is that important for this work yes absolutely they need math proficiency um a glazer has to be able to read specifications and blueprints everything that we do we build we install comes off of blueprints okay and specifications they got to be able to measure 
openings within fractions of an inch to make sure that the fitment of the product is correct. Uh At this point, um, what is that? How does that product get installed? What's the process? What the process is, uh, we get stock lengths of metal in our shops. We cut it up. We build a frame to the dimensions that someone has measured, and um, they send it out with an experienced glazer to install the product. They put the install the framing, then install the glass, seal the, the whole unit, and that's how we do it. All the rain that we've had in recent days makes you wonder about that sealing process. has to be pretty tight, I suspect. Yes, and it has to be done properly. Uh, proper sealant goes a long way. That's the last thing we want is a leak in our system. I can imagine because that comes back, uh, yes. I'm sure, to, to you and to the company. Well, tell me about the four years of Glazer training, um, including how you teach workers to stay healthy. That implies perhaps that there are some health concerns that have to be taken into consideration. Absolutely. There are health concerns. We, we work with sealants. Uh, chemicals for cleaning, uh, things like that. We also have uh, technical adult education classes on CPR, first aid, back injury preventions, uh, safe work practices, uh, things like that. Um, but our apprenticeship, it's a federally approved four-year apprenticeship. Uh, they are trained by a skilled journey person, Glazer, which mm-hmm. is myself right now. and. Um, they also, we train them in blueprint reading, uh, welding, glass handling and cutting, shop fabrication, uh, storefront and curtain wall layout and fabrication, scaffold and swing stage set up, and uh, we, many more classes. That's just a few of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they advance every six months. They have to have 842 and a half hours work and the training and for their advancement. I see. So they're working, though. They're getting paid Absolutely. through that process. Yes. In- interesting. Technology, is that a big part of your work? Technology is a big part of our industry. Uh, we use computers and smartphones on a daily basis to research the new products, to look up uh, specifications, blueprints. A lot of our new saws that we use in our shops are now computerized. Oh. We have CNC machines to cut out, do cutouts and notches. Sure. So yes, we use on a daily basis. It's a it's a kind of work that um, fits right in with our new world, which involves yeah. computers all the Absolutely. way everywhere we go. I understand that. Um, what happens though after completing the apprentice program? How are students placed for that job? Well, when they come out of the four year apprenticeship program, they can stay at the shop that they have been at. Or they, we have 16 contractors that they can solicit work from. Oh. They're able to solicit their own work once they come out of their four-year training. Now, it's not necessarily something that the program guides them toward, or well, is we, it left to them? It's left to them. We, we, we hope that they stay where they have been. They served our four-year apprenticeship. But ultimately, it's up to them what if they want to stay or go to another shop. I understand. Well, um... I've read the history about glazers and how it became a profession. I thought that was pretty interesting. I understand that unionization actually brought, you know, collective bargaining and better pay with benefits for these workers. Does that mean that glazers make a pretty good salary? Um, (laughs) I think we make a very good living. Uh, Glazer coming out of a four-year apprenticeship really makes more money and has more benefits than a person with an average four-year college degree. Really? Yes. And that includes dependents and medical? Medical, dental, yes, pensions, vacation, holiday pay, um, all the above. Well, it uh, certainly is the sort of work that we would like to encourage young people to consider. Um, What kind of support does the union provide? Well, through collective bargaining, uh, they, they provide us with the better pay, the insurance, the pensions, vacations, um, also you know, the protection of our rights as workers. Which sometimes you have to work hard to protect. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as we go through uh, different changes around the country, um, are you currently accepting apprentice applications? We are currently accepting apprentice applications. We accept them Monday through Friday from nine to three. Uh, we keep them on file for three years active. 
there's no fees to to sign up for the apprenticeship. Um, the only cost is really the dedication that it takes to get through the four years while attending all the classes, making all the meetings, and doing what is asked of you. Mm-hmm. Is, there, is there a waiting period for there, your... No waiting period. We take applications year-round, so uh, and we test as needed by the contractors. Test as needed? It is, oh. As they need workers, we test, and then when, when we are asked for so many apprentices, then we put a class together. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Well, you know, I have to ask, uh, as we were talking earlier, prior to um, our our cast here, you mentioned that there's height involved. And, of course, <laughs> uh, my fear of heights would make me say, I don't know if I could do that job. What about that? You've done it for a number of years yourself. Is there a little fear involved? There is a little fear involved, but you, to do this job, I mean, you cannot be afraid of heights. That's one thing. We are up in the air a lot, okay? Um, some people, it's just not cut out for. A lot of people get over that fear first time they go up, mm-hmm. uh, and, and they're fine after that. Um, but that's, like I said, if you have a fear of it that you know of, it's probably not the right job for you. Got it. I see workers at some construction sites tethered. Uh, So obviously you have to be concerned about um, uh, the potential for injury. But once you get over that fear, you probably understand why that harness is is there and and why you're tethered. Uh, Absolutely, because safety is our number one priority on the job sites. And anytime we get up in the air or close to the edge of the building, we will be tethered off um, because, like I said, we do not want to see any injuries. Excellent. We'll be back in a minute with more. You are listening to The Open Source. Become a subscriber. Go to www.theopensource.club. Add your email to the podcast subscription window. Get new shows in your inbox. The new buzz phrase we hear today is dignity of work. It's a response, we think, to the fact that significant numbers of Americans are literally forced to work multiple jobs just to pay for the basics. Being middle class is 30% more expensive than just 20 years ago, yet wages have not kept up. We're bringing you this feature to show you that there are some viable employment options that pay well above average and come with excellent training. In other words, these jobs provide dignity of work. Bob, we want to say thank you for teaching us about the Glazer Apprentice Program. The contact information for the program is on our website, www.theopensource.club. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Bonita Cornute, presented in partnership with the Labor Tribune. Thank you for listening to the OpenSource.club podcast. Become a subscriber through RSS or YouTube. There's more to come that you won't want to miss. Our name is our web address, theopensource.club.